I'm blind, and today is a very special episode of Matthew and Paul. Why? Because I got to speak in front of the Puppy Raising Club in Tacoma, Washington. It was Matt riveting. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but it was really fun to tell my whole story from diagnosis all the way up to present day to a whole bunch of people I'd never met before. Matthew, I was a little nervous. Yeah, you were. I always get a little nervous before I talk in front of crowds, but it was really, really fun once I got up there and started talking and I had Mr. Maple right by my side the whole time, as you'll notice, and I actually got a little emotional at the end. So stick around, you may see a tear fall out of one of my blind eyes. <laughs> I, had, I had more fun watching Mr. Maple while oh, you talk. a lot. He was like bored, then he'd get up, he'd sit down, he'd sniff the other dogs in the room. Fully recommend you watch this entire episode and just watch Maple the yeah, whole time. Yeah, don't he's, listen. He's far more entertaining than me. Before we dive in, because the speech starts right away, because Matthew hit record right before I started talking, you should know that a puppy raising club are the people who volunteer to raise guide dogs from about eight to 10 weeks old, all the way up to the point when they are determined to be ready to go to formal training, which is where they then become matched with their blind handlers. This is like a year plus of volunteer time where they are with the puppies 24 seven, responsible for everything, all of that basic training. They were amazing. And I hope you enjoy this, my very first speech at a puppy raising club. I want to tell you a little bit about my story. So first of all, just thank you for having me here. This is really special. I live in Seattle with my husband, Matthew. Um, so I was diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa when I was 16 years old, that it is an inherited disease. However, my family had never heard of it before. We had no idea what those words were. It was all very brand new to us when I was diagnosed. The reason I went in to see a specialist is because I had a very harrowing experience trying to learn to drive for the first time. <laughs> and there was a lot of clumsiness in my life that led up to that moment. And we just, everybody agreed that Paul is just accident prone. But after, you know, nearly killing everybody in a car, they decided that was important enough to actually look into things. So that's what we did. And I was diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa. You know, it started with night blindness and then these blind spots appeared in my peripheral vision. And as that world, as my world darkened and started to close in, I it was encouraged to get a white cane, but the stigma of that, the visibility of that, ironically enough, was intimidating, was very scary to me to take that step to, sh to say to the world, I, I have a disability. It was a struggle, I have to say, that, that making that decision, I was resistant to it. And it took actually a lot of accidents. Tripping uh, over small children was very common <laughs> and not fun to do. Cause like small children, they fall in slow motion. And then there's this like very frightening pause before they cry. <laughs> You're just holding your breath. You know, I'd fallen off of the sidewalks, walked into trees and realized, you know, it's far more embarrassing to walk around like this than it is to have the cane. So I took that step. I was living in Canada at the time. I got my white cane and it was amazing for me. An incredible moment of independence and realized that people were so kind to me, wanted to help me. Old ladies would walk me across the street. <laughs> it was like embarrassing. I was like, it's okay, I got it. But you know, a lot of the time I would realize I would go out to grocery stores and people uh, were really eager to help. And I thought, I'm that person's good deed for the day, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just really like, okay, you know, let's do this because it really made me realize how much kindness there is in the world, to be honest. I used a white cane for several years and always knew I wanted the dog, but was never really uh, felt that it was the appropriate time. When I met my partner, Matthew, I discovered that he was a dog lover and when I, suggested we get a dog. He said, when we get a dog, it's gonna be your guide dog. And so it was actually over the pandemic that everybody and their uncle was getting a dog. <laughs> it's a very popular time to get dogs. And I feel like it was the closest thing to having like baby fever where like, you know, you see babies everywhere and suddenly you wanna be a parent. I was like, okay, I really wanna just, I want a dog in our lives and I'm ready for that that next step. Matthew said, okay, what, what's, what's next? I said, I guess I have to apply. I didn't even know the process. I didn't understand where to begin, but I just Googled 
guide dog schools. And a couple, I actually found a couple other websites before I landed on GDB's website. But those websites for me were not as accessible and I struggled to find where to apply. And I finally got to GDB and it was just very bold and the contrast was right and I figured it out all on my own. And I applied completely by myself. I called Matthew excitedly and said, I applied like on the internet by myself, which is kind of like an unheard of thing in our relationship. Matthew can attest, he fills out all my forms. So GDB was, that was like a sign to me. I'm like, okay, this is a good start, I think. And at the end of 2020, I got a phone call and they, they said, we're ready, we have a, a match. I said, well, when do I come? And they said like in three weeks. And that was, it was very intense. Maybe one of the most challenging three weeks of my life, just the waiting period between, I drove Matthew crazy doing the stupidest thing which was trying to guess what my dog's name was going to be. <laughs> like, uh, you guys get that, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Like, and I didn't even have a letter. I'm like, every name under the sun. And I'm, and I'm like, I'm looking at all the GDB forums to see like, okay, when would a puppy have been born? And like, looking at all the litters and like, just entertaining myself for those three weeks. I show up for class in January of 2021. And I'm gonna preface this by telling you, this was not getting Mr. Maple. This was a, a trip down to GDB that ultimately did not work out. They matched me with a beautiful yellow lab, a female. She, she was incredible. She was adorable and energetic and sweet and energetic and, <laughs> and, and skilled and energetic. <laughs> and I think you know where I'm going with this. She was a lot to handle for me. And I think when I applied and they kind of saw my personality and my lifestyle and my brisk pace that, and, and, I, and I'm, I'm younger, so they thought, well, we'll get him like a little sports car to take <laughs> home. But what I think they didn't know initially is that while I have this sort of outgoing exterior, I'm actually a very anxious person. I have a lot of anxiety and she was really like, intensifying the anxiety when we would go out together. I, I spoke openly with the staff the whole time. Everybody was incredible. So, so communicative with me. They said, you know, just hang in there. Week two, week one, there's like no confidence with this process. Week two, you're gonna feel really confident. I thought, well, I have nothing to compare this to. It was just my cane before, so I'm sticking with it. You know, let's, let's do this. And as week two happened, the issues really were only intensifying and her distractions. I couldn't take any more and I told them, I, you know, this is week two and I'm feeling like I can't bring her home and I'm so worried, what do I do? They were so sweet about that and they said, we have a couple backup dogs that you can try. Before I tried out those dogs, I can't even impress upon you how devastating it was to say goodbye to this dog that I had only been with for eight days. It was like the most heartbreaking thing and it was only eight days. I just, it was, it, it's incredible the bond you can have with a dog so quickly. And I know everybody in this room understands that. Yes. That it can happen instantly. Yes. And it can be a week and it's gonna be devastating to, to see the dog go. And of course you guys know better than anybody because you have to say goodbye to the dogs. <laughs> like that is something I can't even imagine. I don't even want to go there. That'll be my number one question for you guys. How do you, how do you deal? You know, how much cake and ice cream? Oh yeah, get another one. <laughs> <laughs> So I did try out a couple other dogs. One was uh, too slow. The other one, I had only, my only request from GDB was that it be a light colored dog because of the nature of my uh, blindness at the time. I have a, I have a little tiny bit of a, it's like looking through a straw uh, because of the, the, the low light detection is very weak. So having a light colored dog at least lets me see him in darker situations. There's a little bit of that contrast I can get. So they said, we do have a, we do have a black lab are you, you know, opposed to trying that? And I said, well, you know, I'm here, let's try it. And I tried to feed a kibble to her butt. <laughs> I was like, I don't think this is gonna work. <laughs> I have no idea where this dog is. We were standing on a black carpet and there was just like, I understand that, you know, at some point I do have progressive vision loss. At some point that isn't gonna matter, but at this stage of my journey, it does. And it did matter to me. And so, Unfortunately, I called Matthew that evening and 
I said it's over, you know, I'm, I'm coming home and just dropped everything and came down to Oregon to get me. And it was, it was tough and I really did grieve the whole experience for a few months. But when I left, you know, the staff, the training, the trainers, the whole experience with GDB was so positive, so incredible. They all said, please, 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 as soon as you're ready, reapply. So I went home and it did take me several months just to feel ready again. I would go on these long walks every day, just kind of like processing the experience. I even called back a few times to, I'm like, I made a mistake. I want my dog back, the, the dog that I originally got. Is there any way I can get her back? Like I went through all this bartering and everything, all these stages. And I, I remember the person talking to me said, you know, really trust your gut. You made the right decision. A lot of people go home and figure this out three or four months later and have to say goodbye to their dogs. Uh, after the fact, which can be, well, which I imagine would be much harder. My trainer at the time had this beautiful message to me. And she said it wasn't a waste, not for you, not for your dog, because you prepared her for her eventual handler and she prepared you for your next dog. And that was a vital training. A few months go by and in April I reapplied. That was a long and exciting <laughs> nail biting, biting wait again, but I got a phone call in early October of 2021 and it was actually the supervisor who had experienced the whole first time with me and she said you know this isn't really how it's done we usually do a whole matching process with several people involved but I'm here right now and there's just this dog I remember you and I keep thinking about you and I think this is your dog can you come down <laughs> I'm getting chills even just telling you that right now it was so special she couldn't tell me she didn't tell me anything I'm like what's his name she's like I'm sorry I cannot tell you <laughs> so so three more weeks of guessing my dog's name, <laughs> unsuccessfully. And uh, I went down in uh, October of 2021 and October 25th, dog day, as we all know, is when this guy came running into the room. I'm sitting on the lazy boy couch. I'm sure some of you have seen the clip. I did post it. And I set up the camera to show Matthew because I wanted Matthew to have some record of the experience too. And um, yeah, it was a very incredible moment because I just remember the door opening and my trainer said, uh, her name was Kai, and she said, it's Kai and friend. And I thought she said Fred. So for like the first two minutes, I thought Mr. Maple's name was Fred, <laughs> which I was totally fine with. His middle name is Fred now, so. Uh, <laughs> the connection was really instant. I can still picture, because I have this little fuzzy, you know, bit of central straw vision. I locked on his face as he came through the door and it was just like his eyes were sparkling, his face like was lit up as he came toward me. It was, like I said, an instant bond. And when we went out in the harness for the first time, it was then, that moment, for the first time in almost a year that I fully let go of the first dog that I had, that I realized, oh, this is what it's supposed to feel like. And it was such an incredible click. And then we've heard about it. It's, you know, people talk about that moment when you, that first walk with the dog. I just felt the tension like in my shoulders relax. And I felt this cool, confident walk that I hadn't experienced since before my diagnosis, before, you know, it probably ever, because even when I was young, I was walking into poles. <laughs> and that was a really beautiful, special moment that I will never forget. And the, the, as the week progressed, he just impressed me so much. He really amazed me with his skills. And I said something to my trainer that week that I've never said about anything in my vision loss journey. And I said, as a person with low vision, blindness, there are very, very few, if any, experiences in which I don't envy a full-sighted person. Their ability to see, go to the movie theater and see the movie screen or enjoy in a, a beautiful view, I, I can enjoy them in my own way, but I always envy the experience of the fully sighted a little bit and wonder what that's like. And I said, but being here, for the first time, I think a sighted person would envy me. <laughs> I'm almost crying saying that because that's a gift. That's an incredible gift that the dogs and this whole organization gives to us who are without vision 
is that we feel special in a way that we've never felt special. And of course, you guys work out all the kinks, so. <laughs> By the time I get the dog, he's like perfect. So thank you for that. Appreciate all the hard work. I know he didn't come out this way. Um, <laughs> and so when I came home, uh, we live in downtown Seattle. It's just been a really magical experience ever since. And, and, and like I mentioned at the beginning, I, we do some stuff on social media. Sharing Ma Maple's, that moment of, of, of Maple and I meeting was like a viral video that got a lot of attention. And we've been having so much fun um, showing what uh, the sort of the guide dog lifestyle can be like, um, as well as educating people about low vision and blindness. And people have so many guide dog questions. And we do get recognized sometimes out on the street, but it, well, nobody actually remembers Matthew or my name, but everybody <laughs> knows Mr. Maple. And so he's the star, and thankfully, he's pretty humble about it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, this, this speech of mine. I hope I get more opportunities to do things like this because it was really fun. There is no extended episode today. However, many of our videos do have extended portions. Plus we have bonus features. We have bonus podcast episodes and all kinds of things over at patreon.com slash Matthew and Paul. So I urge you to go check that out because there is a lot of stuff there. If you're not sick of us already, there's enough stuff there that you might actually become sick of us. Amen. <laughs> and if you want to jump over to our YouTube subscriptions, you can do that as well. See all of our extended episodes and join that community. And we'll look forward to seeing you guys next week. And Matthew will come out from behind the camera for next week's episode. Right, Matthew? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Bye.